Yo, what is up guys? Delboy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV. Hopefully you guys are doing well. If you're new here, smash that like, hit subscribe, all of that good stuff. So basically just a quick full card preview for Anthony Joshua versus Kubra Pulev. Essentially I'll be going through each fight on the card and sharing my thoughts. Elephant in the room, do I believe this card is worth £25? Am I buying it? Absolutely not. I don't believe what's on offer here values £25. That's just my opinion. And by running through these fights, I'll basically explain why. But for me, £25 is a little steep for this particular card. I know it's only a £5 increase, but, you know, if you give them an inch, they take a mile. So I'm not standing for it. I'm not going to buy it. It's that simple. And also, I don't really appreciate the fact that... I don't appreciate the slimy nature in which they've priced this pay-per-view card because when Joshua fought Ruiz in the rematch, that fight was basically 25 quid and they explained it as being like a one-off. It's such a big fight. It has to be 25 pounds. You know, it's a one-off. blah de blah de blah Here we are. Anthony Joshua versus Kubrat Pulev. Pulev, by the way, who's past his best, 40 years old more, more or less, and it's 25 quid. I'm not paying it. I'm streaming it, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, let's run through the card briefly. So Anthony Joshua versus Kubrat Pulev. I've actually done a prediction video for this fight. You can find that on my channel if you are interested. But in short, I'm picking Joshua to win. And I'm picking him to win comfortably. To me, Kubrat Pulev is past his best. He's never looked the same since the Vladimir Klitschko fight. And I challenge you to find three good like, really good performances by Kubrat Pulev since the, since the Vladimir Klitschko fight. You know, in, if you look at Pulev's last three fights, he fought Rydell Booker in his last fight, and he went the distance. By the way, Rydell Booker got destroyed against Filip Hergovic. Pulev went the distance against Rydell Booker, looked horrible, looked slow, looked lethargic. He got tuned up by Bogdan Dinu the fight before that. Bogdan Dinu, who's not a top 25 heavyweight, and, the fight, and yeah, the fight before that, he fought Huey Fury. You know, he won that fight clearly. But even in that fight, to me, he never looked all that great. He got rocked by Huey Fury. You know, to me, Pulev is there for the taking. He's been past his best for a long time. And he's never looked the same since the Vladimir Klitschko fight. I think his punch resistance has gone. And I don't expect him to really do anything in this fight. He's too slow. He's too old. And I think he's going to get blown away in this one. It's just that simple. I've seen nothing from Pulev in the last five years to indicate that he's going to give Joshua any real problems. You know, that's just how I feel. I've seen Pulev's, I've seen all of Pulev's fights um, since before the Klitschko fight. Probably since maybe like Dimitrenko or Ustinov. I've seen all of Pulev's fights and he's not looked as good post Klitschko um, in my opinion. It's that simple. So, I sound like Tony Bellew, don't I? It's just that simple. But... Yeah, Pulev Joshua, I get it, it's a mandatory, it has to happen, but regardless, it doesn't make it a good fight. It's not It's not a great fight, in my opinion, it is what it is. Um, the second fight on the card is Lawrence Okole versus Nikodem Jezufski from Poland. Now, originally, Lawrence Okole was supposed to fight Krzysztof Glowacki, and that fight I was actually really intrigued about, to be honest, but this replacement opponent... Not interested. I understand that Glowacki pulled out with two weeks to go. And obviously that's going to leave him short in regards to the replacement opponents. I get that. But regardless of that fact, you know, this really, to me, doesn't look like an interesting fight. I've never actually seen Jezuski fight before. Maybe he's a diamond in the rough, but I doubt it, to be honest. I very much doubt it. This guy went a majority decision with Sean Del Winters. And obviously we've seen Sean Del Winters get destroyed against Alan Babich. So, Lawrence, Lawrence Okole versus Nikodem Jezufski. Uh, not interested at all, um, to be honest. And it's unfortunate because that fight between Lawrence Okole versus Glowacki would have been interesting. But it's not happening anymore. This is the replacement and I'm not interested. We then have Huey Fury versus Marius Wack. Now, this fight, to me, should not be on a pay-per-view card. It's just that simple. Stylistically, this one is very likely to be a poor, boring fight. You know, Marius Wack is slow as molasses, doesn't throw a lot of punches these days, 
past his best, taken a lot of beatings, and Huey Fury is a safety first fighter. That doesn't gel for a great fight right there. I understand this fight from Huey Fury's perspective, you know, in regards to like like development. He needs these sort of fights against strong fringe contenders who are durable, who are tough, who have been around. He needs these sort of fights to develop, but it, it should not be on a pay-per-view card, in my opinion. This should be on a regular Sky card. Um, Huey Fury has missed out on these sort of fights in the past, and he's jumped right to world level, and as a result, he's, be he's been found wanting. So yeah, while I understand this fight from Huey's perspective, it shouldn't be on a pay-per-view card, and more than likely, this fight's going to be a bore fest. So, again, Huey Fury versus Marius Wack on pay-per-view. It's a no from me, it's a no from me. Now, in my opinion, this is the most interesting fight on the card, and this is the fight I'm looking forward to most on the card. Martin Bacole versus Sergei Kuzmin. Obviously, heavyweight contenders. Both guys have an identical record of 15-1, and one, and funnily enough... Both guys have lost to the same person in Michael Hunter. So, it's a good crossroads fight. Both guys are very aggressive. Both guys carry power. Defensively, both guys can be hit. Stylistically, this one should gel to be a really good fight. Um, originally, this fight was supposed to be on Povetkin versus White 1 card. But, um, you know, for whatever reason, Kuzmin pulled out, I believe, due to some family issues. And now it's been rescheduled for the Joshua card. I really like this fight. I think it's, I basically think it's a 50-50, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this one, I have to say, I think this is the best fight on the card, the one I'm looking forward to most anyway, and um, yeah, I'll be intrigued about that fight, so uh, Bacole versus Kuzmin, thumbs up from me, thumbs up from me, Kieran Conway versus Macaulay McGowan, that's an okay fight domestically, um, Kieran Conway, is a, is, he's a pretty good domestic fighter at 154, um, he's he's coming on quite well, fairly fun fighter to watch, and Macaulay McGowan, uh, quite a busy fighter, good work rate, relatively aggressive. Those two should have a good little scrap, but again, is that really the standard for pay per view? Not sure. To me, that's a Sky Sports main like regular type of fight on an undercard. That's where that, sh that that's where that fight should be on, in my opinion. Just a regular Sky card on the undercard. Um, so yeah, decent fight I guess, but pay-per-view, not really. Uh, Crash Ashfak versus Ashley Lane. I mean, Ashfak lost his last fight against Mark Leach on regular Sky. Looked pretty poor in my opinion, and here he is on a pay-per-view card against Ashley Lane. A pretty tough guy, but it's not pay-per-view, is it? Let's be honest about it. And last but not least, we have Florian Marku versus Alex Fearon. Uh, Florian Marku is an Albanian welterweight. He's quite fun, carries power, very aggressive. Um, Alex Fearon, I've never seen him fight before. That could be a good little tear up, just because of like what style Marku has. But again, that's a regular Sky Card type of fight. That's a Sky Sports live stream fight. You know, like the pre, like before the card starts, they they live stream on Facebook. That's where that fight should be. It should not be on a pay per view card. To me, this card has one genuine competitive fight, and that is Bacole versus Kuzmin. That is the only fight in which I could see going either way. Do you see Joshua Pulev going either way? I don't. Do you see Akole versus Jezufsky going either way? I don't. Do you see Fury versus Wack going either way? I don't. And I can go on. Conway versus McCowan. Very much likely Conway wins. Ashback versus Lane. That could be relatively competitive, to be fair. But Ashback should win. And obviously, Marku versus Fearon, Marku should win. All of these fights, to me, are just one-sided, for the most part, apart from Kuzmin Bacole. It is To me, it's not a pay-per-view card. One of the worst pay-per-view cards I've seen in quite some time. Not good enough, in my opinion. Uh, not good enough. And for £25, I, I think it's an absolute disgrace, I have to say. You know, I mean, what I value as £25 and what the next man values as £25, obviously, is different. I'm just giving you my perspective. If I was a millionaire, I wouldn't pay for this card, personally. But it is what it is. Um, anyway, share your thoughts below. What do you think of this card? Do you believe it's worth £25? Are you buying it? And are you looking forward to it? Share your thoughts below.